What has 20 legs, 20 eyes, and 10 arms? It's a softball team in Miami called the One Arm Bandits. And they don't want your sympathy, they want to kick your butt. All over the United States, teams gather, and believe it or not, they beat able-bodied players all the time. We're getting creamed right now. Growing up in the Bronx, Victor always wanted to fit in. Having been born with a misshapen right arm, he was often teased by other kids. Test their skills at the All-American Game of Softball. And Victor Rosario's team is no exception. The only difference is, Victor's team is made up entirely of one-armed players. And believe it or not, they beat able-bodied players all the time. We're getting creamed right now. Growing up in the Bronx, Victor always wanted to fit in. Having been born with a misshapen right arm, he was often teased by other kids. Growing up, being physically challenged uh, with one arm, a lot of kids make fun of you. It's like you're an outcast. And kids are, are simply cruel at that age. Anxious to prove that he could do anything, Victor eventually worked his way onto the high school baseball team. But it wasn't until recently that he was inspired to start a softball team made up of 10 one-armed players. So he called Roscoe Jones, a friend and former ball player. One day he said he was going to start a softball team. I said, whenever you get ready to start it, call me up. I'll be there. Not long after, the one-armed bandits were born. But would this unique team actually be able to play? Being a one-armed ball player isn't easy. It requires tremendous dexterity. When I catch the ball, basically what I do is I flip it to my deformed arm, make it go across my chest while I'm taking my glove off. And in the process, the ball is down on my good arm, and I'm throwing it away. Despite his athletic background, learning one-arm ball was just as tough for Roscoe. I didn't think I was going to be a great baseball player because I was predominantly right-handed. I had to learn how to do everything again with my left hand. As word spread, the one-armed bandits grew, even spending time visiting children's hospitals. <laughs> and despite the fact they'd be playing a team of two-armed players, the bandits knew one thing. They didn't want any special treatment. They won't change any rules for us, so we have to work out a little harder than that able-bodied player. Today, the third-place bandits are playing the Westchester Optimists from Miami, Florida. But unlike the bandits, the optimists are all able-bodied players. Still, they have no intention of going soft on their disabled opponents. But we're going to beat them anyway. It's game time. A quick first strike for the bandits. The optimists get a hit. And another. A line drive double brings in three runs. Despite Roscoe's best cheerleading efforts, by the fifth inning, the Bandits are losing ground. 8-6 now, 8-6. We're down by two, guys. we got to get back in this game. But it's the eighth run that turns the tide. Bandit defense picks up. Out at first. With a little hitting streak, the Bandits begin to rally. Soon, the score is 12 to 10 in favor of the Bandits. Suddenly, the optimists sound more like pessimists. They're missing the arm, and they're beating us. <laughs> in fact, not only do the Bandits rally, but by the final inning, they end up blowing out their opponents 25 to 10. A truly amazing display. I told you. We did terrific. We did outstanding. The guys played a little, a little better than what I expected today. With spreading awareness that physically challenged are here, we're able to compete. You know, won't take us lightly. You know, we're going to beat some butts. Yeah. All right, they're, they're a good team. You know, but we're better. <laughs> It was a, what, 25, 10 score or something like that? Oh, God, that's embarrassing. 